The thing that Dr. Fauci is concerned about is variants, uh, Dr. Gottlieb, and uh, that seemed to be something that Senator Paul either didn't uh, seem to want to hear or understand or something. Um, what was your takeaway? Well, look, I think they both made valid points. The reality is we're not through this. This is always going to be a precarious month because people want to be through it, and there's light at the end of the tunnel. And there was always a risk that we would take our foot off the brake too early and start to see a surge in infection. And we're probably seeing that in some parts of the country. We're seeing at least a plateauing of cases. We're seeing an uptick in places like Michigan, New York. Now, that doesn't mean we're going to have a fourth wave of infection, but it does mean that's probably going to take a little longer to get out of this than it otherwise would have. It might have been inevitable. I'm not sure we could have kept our foot on the brakes inevitably. Um, but this is a difficult month because in April and May, things may look much more clear and it may be obvious we could take our masks off. Right now, it's not quite as obvious. That said, there needs to be light at the end of the tunnel. And I think we need to recognize that as the population gets vaccinated and the overall vulnerability of the population decreases, we're going to be able to take more risk. And that includes going out without masks and doing things in Congress settings. Now, the, the variants do pose a risk. I'm less worried right now about B117. We've seen that become epidemic in parts of the country, but it hasn't caused a surge of infection in places like California and Texas and, and Florida, where B117 is well over 50 percent of the infections. You're not seeing a sharp uptick like we expected, which is an indication that the prior immunity that we have combined with vaccination is enough to quell B117. What I'm more worried about right now is 1526 in the New York region. And whatever is going on in Michigan, which we might not fully understand, I mean, I think part of the challenge in Michigan is they just haven't vaccinated a lot of their population, especially their vulnerable population. But New York does appear to be um, a consequence of 1526. Probably about 50 percent of infections in New York, maybe more, are 1526 right now. And half of them have that 484K mutation that's in the South African variant. So that is a cause for concern. We need to figure out if that variant is, in fact, more infectious, more pathogenic and why it's spreading. So, Dr. Lowe, just let's be very clear here. It sounds to me you're not, you're not taking the position uh, that Dr. Fauci is taking. You, you, it sounds to me, you, in fact, you're taking more of the position that Senator Paul is taking. No, no Andrew. I, I, what I'm saying is we need to be careful this month. I don't think that this is a time to start lifting uh, mitigation, the, the simpler mitigation, like wearing masks, things like that. But I also think we need to prescribe what the environment's going to look like when risk is more fully reduced. I, you know, in April and May, we may be in a very different situation. I believe we will. I think infection levels are going to be much lower, and we're going to have much more immunity in the population through vaccination that we know is going to provide a backstop. So, doctor, At that I, point, doctor, we I'm, can take more risk. Right. I'm, I have to say, though, I'm confused. So, Dr. Fauci is suggesting that we're going to be wearing masks um, at the office, in, in other congregate settings for the next year or more, airplanes, subways, and the like, right? You seem to be saying something else today, though we've also had conversations on this very show in the past two weeks where you've said, you know what, you're going to have to keep masking, and you've even talked about not having in-person meetings uh, in the fourth quarter of this year. So help, help break down what you're thinking here and if your thinking has changed even over the past two weeks. No, my thinking hasn't changed. And I don't know that Tony's saying we have to wear masks for the next year. You know, Senator Paul said Tony said that. I'm not sure that uh, Tony Fauci said that we're going to be wearing masks inevitably. I think the reality is that if infection levels get low this summer, which I believe they will, and we've fully vaccinated 50 or 60 percent of the adult population, we're not going to be wearing masks on the beach on July 4th. We're not going to be wearing masks right. uh, probably in indoor Sorry. settings unless we want to. You know, but I do think as we get into the fall and the winter and this starts to spread again, perhaps we have an epidemic of this. And I hope we won't. I don't think we will. But this will start to spread. We may reimplement some of the mitigation. I don't know that masks are going to be mandatory um, over, at any point over the next year. They might in certain parts of the country. Hopefully they won't be because that will mean we have an outbreak. I think a lot of people will still be wearing masks, though, probably including me if I travel this winter. Hey, doctor, the, the, we know that there are variants around that are uh, that are a problem. If we get to the point I mean, you know about the one in New York. Uh, if we were just in a situation where variants arise uh, all the time, you could you could say you need to wear masks all the time, essentially, I guess. But but knowing that there is this variant, is there a reason to think that if you're vaccine that uh, if you've gotten the vaccine that it, you're not immune from that variant? We just don't know the data on that, I guess. So that that would make yeah, sense. Yeah, I mean that's that, the that's the problem. 
Well, first of all, I don't think that this is variance forever. I, you know, there's a lot of people, the people at Scripps, Trevor Bedford, others who've looked at this, believe that this virus has mutated rapidly over a short period of time, and it's going to reach a new steady state where it's not going to continue to re mutate at this level. Um, so we're not just going to have these, hopefully, ha have these new variants that can thwart the vaccine. We also don't know that these variants reduce the vaccine effectiveness that much, if at all. We don't fully understand that. The reality is we just haven't vaccinated enough of the public yet to really create that backstop. I think in a month, things are going to look very different. In terms of your question directly, we haven't seen evidence, and this is really just anecdotal. I've called around at doctors in New York. We haven't seen evidence uh, on a wholesale basis of reinfections or people getting infected after they've been fully vaccinated. But we don't know. And, and the reality is we should know. I mean, we should be much better at this. This is what CDC should be doing, not still arbitrating three feet versus six feet a year later. We should be on top of these new variants, mm -hmm. evaluating what their clinical course is. We shouldn't have to wait months to get this information. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.